Hi. Today I'm going to talk about conversation analysis. So what is conversation analysis? To answer that question, today we are going to talk a bit about its history and its very first paper. Here's my quick summary. Conversation analysis is pattern recognition model or framework built from analysis of naturally occurring conversation, thus it capable of analyzing naturally occurring conversation. Uh, it is technology enabled. We are talking about the availability of sound recording and playback system back in the 60s. I mean 1960s. And it was and still is constructed based on observation. To be specific, again, observation on naturally occurring conversation. To start things off, I'm going to drop some names. Hart Garfinkel, Arvin Goffman, Harvey Sachs, Emmanuel Shegloff, and Gail Jefferson. Let's start with Harvey Sachs. This guy was a student on, of Harriet Garfinkel and Arvin Goffman in the broader sense. Harry Garfinkel is the founder of the field of ethnomethodology in the 50s and 60s, while Arvin Goffman later produces work emphasized on studying actual instances of social interaction throughout the late 50s to early 60s. I don't want to go into the detail, but we can see their footprints in CA analysis, especially on investigation and treatment of structures in natural interaction. In the early 60s, Sachs was a fellow at the Center for the Scientific Study of Suicide in Los Angeles. To put a long story short, his fellowship enables him to gain access to recordings of calls to the suicide prevention hotline. One of his earliest work based on the audio recorder data is on categories of people to turn to, meaning people to look for help in the context of suicide. Then Sachs shared his observations with his fellow. So we have one more name here. His name is Emmanuel Shegloff. Their closeness and intense communication is recorded in Shegloff's introduction to Sachs' lectures in conversation. Uh, it, it is a volume published posthumously based on Sachs' lectures in UCLA in 1964 to 1968. The person who transcribed Sachs' lectures and then later edited the volume is Gail Jefferson. Here she is. She is the person who laid the foundation for transcription system for conversation analysis. Her name is synonymous with conversation analysis transcription system. Some of us may be familiar with the transcription system called as Jefferson transcription system system, or some may say Jeffersonian transcription system. Continuing to our main topic, okay. The history of CA uh, has its important milestone, which is the publication of a paper entitled, here we have it, A Simplest Systematics for the Organization of Turn-Taking for Conversation. The paper is also called SSJ 1974, a shortened form of Sachs, Shegloff, and Jefferson. Now, what is the essence of this paper? The paper is mainly a proposal for what SSG call a model for the turn-taking organization for conversation. So how this model come about? Well, it came from observation of a bunch of audio recording. They work with the data, I mean, the audio recording for six years or in their term, half a dozen years. And the pattern becomes clear and consistent to them. What are the patterns? What are their observations? Okay, before we go into those observations, there's a, an important, even critical keyword that I would like to emphasize here is turn, as in people take turn in talking as in who goes first and who goes later, which becomes turn-taking. The heart of the paper here analyzes how people organize them, themselves in taking turn to talk, which turn out to be the Assam pattern. Now let's see what they observe in the data. Be prepared, it is a long list. So 
So here they are. There are 14 of them. I've warned you. I'll be discussing it one by one, regardless if you're ready or not. Okay, the first point is that they observe a consistent regularity in speaker change. Or yeah, in other words, people take turn in talking because there's a speaker change. It's that simple. Point two and three are the observations about how speaker change occurs. Most of the time, there's only a single speaker, but sometimes there are also overlaps. Point four, about the transition between the speakers, which are sometimes happen mostly without gap. The interest here is that if speaker change occurs without gap or with very small gap, there should be something within the ongoing turn that enables the prospective next speaker to start their turn as soon as the current speaker stops. Next, point five and six are special, where the reference to turn is mentioned, and they are about the order and the size of the turn. Point seven to thirteen are most are more specific about the length and distribution of the talk. The shape of conversations, length and distribution of the talk are not externally regulated or preset. So the interest here is that there should be some mechanisms, some socially organized and mutually intelligible organizations that enable participants in the talk to govern the talk internally as they speak. Point 14 is special, that it observes mechanism that they call repair. This mechanism exists to deal with turn-taking errors and violations. So how the model can account for those observations? So the proposed model consists of two components and a set of rules. The first one is turn constructional component. And the second one is turn allocation component. Turn constructional component is basically what makes up a turn. This may seem pretty trivial and obvious, uh, but you see, people do not speak in full sentences all the time. A model, a system that governs natural conversation should be able to account for that fundamental observation. Hence, some kinds of socially organized and mutually intelligible units that is not exclusively sentence should exist. And the production of that single unit is sufficient to be warrant a well-formed, sensible conversational turn. Now let's look at this extract we have on our screen. The turn here occurs in different lengths and shapes. Fern here we have says, well, they are not coming. And then Lana says, who? Both, well, they are not coming and who, as far as the system concerned, they are the same. They are turns. So that was the turn constructional component of the model proposed in SSJ 1974. Then for me, the other component, turn allocation component, is a collection of rules that govern how people select next speaker and what happens when they don't. Turn allocation techniques are distributed into two groups, those in which next turn is allocated by current speakers selecting next speaker and those in which a next turn is allocated by self-selection. So what are the rules? They are pretty straightforward actually, but there are a lot of them, so I'm saving them for the next video. So today we've talked a bit about the history of CA and its very first paper. In summary, conversation analysis or CA is pattern recognition model or framework. It was built from analysis of naturally occurring conversation, thus it capable of analyzing naturally occurring conversation. In the beginning, it was technology enabled, which was the availability of sound recording and playback system in the 60s. It was and still is based on observation, to be specific, 
observation of naturally occurring conversation. So what happened since then? Since the publication of SSG 1974, people exploit this framework to formulate other phenomena. But that is for another video. Stay tuned and bye.